Good afternoon, everyone. We're so glad to be here. Hello. We thank God for his mercy and his goodness and his loving kindness to uh, allow us to be here. Because he didn't have to, you know, it could have been uh, when you laid down last night, you didn't have to get back up. Uh, that could have been just it. Uh, but this is a new day that God has given us. Uh, there's a whole lot of things going on in the world today, but um, we're not of this world, even though we're here. Uh, God doesn't want us to get so caught up uh, in the world down here that we cannot listen and hear him when he's uh, telling us what to do or what to say. Because he, the Lord comes first. It says that all in the scripture in Deuteronomy 6 that we're supposed to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might, with our entire being. So when you get a chance to look at that, it's uh, Deuteronomy the 6th chapter, the 6th verse. And I just want to open up in a word of prayer and then we're going to uh, I'm gonna read some. Uh, because God don't want us to have no fear. He wants us to be a good carriage. He wants us to uh, be able to follow the plans that he has for our life, not plans that we have. Because when, when, he, when he fixes things for us, he gives us all sufficiency and all qualification to do the things that he has set before us. And when we do it ourselves, we just get everything messed up. Amen. Trying to qualify in this world, uh, fighting against prejudice and hatefulness and wickedness, and you never will be successful because you're not meant to be successful down here. Because this this world does not belong to us. We are from a kingdom. We're from the King, Lord God Almighty, who is King of King and Lord of Lords. But I, I'm going to open up in a word of prayer to Heavenly Father, our Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I come to you at this time with just, um, just asking you and thanking you for uh, having mercy on all your children. And I know your children are the ones who belong to you. Lord, I ask you to forgive us for the sins that we have committed through the week. Uh, maybe sins of uh, not having courage and not having the confidence that we're supposed to have in you and the trust. We're supposed to put all our trust in you and confidence in you no matter what the circumstance is because that's what your word says. So, Lord, I just... Uh, Ask you to have mercy on all of us when we uh, waver in any kind of way when it comes to uh, to you, Lord, because you are our God. You are, you are the one and only God, and you you are the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and because of your love for us, you sent your Son into this world to be a sacrifice for our sins, to be sacrificed on the cross. And then you didn't let him just stay there. When he died and was buried three days, you resurrected him from the grave for all of us, for me and you and everyone that's listening, the sinners. Lord, you came to save us from our sins, and you have done just that. And we don't have to continue to sin. Lord, I ask you if it's uh, any kind of way that you just, uh, when you make a way out of no way, just continue to love us and show us and um, that we must go on about this journey that you have set before us. And uh, we ought not to uh, waver. We're going to get tired, I believe, in my heart and I believe in my body. It's tired sometimes. But Lord, I thank you for strengthening us with your Holy Spirit despite how we feel sometimes. You some kind of way give us that extra zest and zeal to keep going. And we thank you for that, Father. Thank you for everything that you have done for us. But you folks, you're so kind and, and, and loving. And you don't have to be. And Lord, I just uh, ask you to help us continually so we can lead people to Christ. And Lord, we know we got to lead them to Christ because your words say the only way to get to you it's through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we just 
thank you for encouraging us all week long. And Lord, I pray that those that are listening would just let your spirit just lead them to encourage others and not be timid and not be afraid and just go ahead and speak your word, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for everything you've done for us. And Lord, I ask you to allow your Holy Spirit to lead me this morning in our Bible study. I know I must decrease and you will increase. You are the one who allows us to grow. You're the creator of the heavens and earth. There's not a creature that you have made that you don't see. And Lord, we thank you because we know you see everything. You see when we in trouble, you see when we have needs, you see when we make mistakes, you see when we sin. But you allow us to confess our sins, and you're faithful to forgive us for our sins if we confess. So, Lord, I, I thank you for everything. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. And if everyone would just turn to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. And see, we have security just trusting God. You said Psalms what? 91. And this is continuing on from our message um, from Thursday that we had to remain in, in God. We had to make, remain with our good shepherd. We had to remain so the Spirit can lead us and not be pulling away from the Lord. And this is says here in the first verse, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. This is one reason we had to remain with him. We had to remain. And then see, when your enemy come upon you, you don't have to worry about nothing when you remain with the Lord. It says, I will say the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust with great confidence and whom we rely. For he will save you from the trap of the fowl and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. See, God is faithful to us even when we're not faithful. He's always there. He's almighty powerful. And he's all knowing. So, you know, many times we go to him in prayer, but he already knows. He just wants us to know that he is the only one who can help us. Mm -hmm. And it says here, uh, he is faithfulness. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. No, nothing can get through him. So if you have somebody coming against you, they got to get through God and get through him. And it says here, uh, you will not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by the day, nor of the pestilence that stops in darkness. We got all kind of evil, wicked things that's walking around in darkness. Mm -hmm. And when it's saying darkness, that's evil. You know, that's the, that's the world. Pestilence, viruses, wars, just uh, under attack, looking for whatever they can uh, devour. That's Satan. And then it says, nor of the destruction, sudden death, that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But the danger will not come near you. So uh, God don't want us to get ourselves so upset and worried and afraid of what's going on in the world today. And there's a lot going on. We have the, the virus, the COVID virus that's still uh, attacking many people, and then we have the Ukraine war just going on, and no telling what else is going on. This is just what we're allowed to hear, you know, through the media, but it's a many other people that's under attack today. 
We just haven't been told about it. Some of these people are being attacked even in their own homes. You don't know what they may be going through. It says that you will be a spectator as you look with your own eyes. That's all we're supposed to do is just look. And to witness the divine repayment of the wicked as you watch safely from the shelter of the Most High. See, we have to remain with God because that is our shelter. He is our shield. It says, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil will befall you, nor will any plague, you know, this virus we're talking about, mm -hmm. nor will any plague come near your tent. Mm -hmm. And he will command his angels in regard to you to protect and defend and guard you in all the ways. Mm -hmm obedience and service. That's one thing about it. It says in obedience and service. So if you remain with God, then you're being obedient to God and you're doing the things he tells you to do. Then you don't have nothing to worry about. Now if you're not doing what he tells you to do, and you're not being obedient, then you know you're not in his you're not remaining in his uh shelter. Just go with me for a minute. I'm going to go back to there's Romans, the 8th chapter. I don't want anybody to think I'm making up anything. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, when we go to Romans, the 8th chapter, this is in the 28th verse, we know with great confidence that God who is deeply concerned about us because this is this is our God who's always concerned about us causes all things mm -hmm. to work together as a plan for the good of those who love God the ones who love God want to remain with God want to stay with God want to be obedient to God want to serve God to those who are called according to his plan and purpose see we had to do the things what what God tell us to do. Mm -hmm. And we had to remain with him. Then go back to Psalms 91. It says for uh, the 11th verse again, it says, for he will command his angels to regard in regard to you to protect, mm -hmm. defend, and guard you in all your ways of obedience and service. That don't mean you're going to be doing your thing. I'm going to do what I want to do. You're going to be doing what he tells you to do. When he tells you to do, do it and how he tells you to do it. It says that they will lift up in their hands. They will lift you up in their hands. And that you do not even strike your foot against a stone. You would tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent would trample underfoot. Because he has set his love on me. Hmm. See, that's the kind of God I want to love me. He, he detests me. He provides for me. He lifts me up when I'm falling. He don't let me no harm come to me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to be afraid. All I have is joy. <laughs> Unspeakable joy. See, his joy is our strength. It is our stronghold. Hmm. And that joy is the love of God. And then it says here, uh, because he sent his love on me, therefore I will save him. I will set him securely on high because he knows my name. He confidently trusts and relies on me, knowing I will never abandon him. No, never. This is God telling us this. He will never abandon us. So we had to remain with him. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and I will let him see my salvation. Hmm. This is God talking mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. How much he loves us. He loves us. I, I can't even begin to, uh, when you would know as you get older and you grow, spiritually mature, I'm not talking about my age, but spiritually, mm -hmm. 
getting closer to our Lord, getting closer to our King. And then go to um, the book of John. It's just so important that we know about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because he is our life, he is our life. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first chapter, thank you, Holy Spirit. It says here, in the beginning before all time was the word, Christ. Mm -hmm. And the word was God, and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning and caught eternally with God. And all things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. And him was life and the power to bestow life. And life was the light of men. Mm. The light shines on the darkness and darkness did not understand it, mm -hmm. overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it. It was unreceptive to it. See, light has more strength and power than darkness. You can go into a, a dark room and, and turn the light on and you can't even see darkness no more. That's the kind of children we're supposed to be. When we walk into darkness around wicked people or evil people, we're supposed to be a light, a distinction, around those people when we come in there. We're not supposed to be the same. Not when we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we have been born again, as it says in the 13th verse. And maybe I'll read 12, it says, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right, the authority, the privilege to become children of God. Mm -hmm. That is those who believe in and adhere to trust in and rely on his name. Those are the ones who remain with him. Who are were born not of the blood of natural conception, nor the will of the flesh or physical impulse, nor the will of man that is a natural father, mm -hmm. but of God that is a divine and supernatural birth. They are born of God, spiritually transformed and renewed. And sanctified. See, when you become sanctified, you become holy. Mm -hmm. The spirit in you is holy. Mm -hmm. The body is nothing but some flesh. It did not become holy, but your spirit has become holy. And when you receive the spirit of God, you have a change upon yourself. You start maturing more and more spiritually. The old self of you starts to die. You no longer want to please your flesh so much. You want to please God. That's what the Holy Spirit will do for you. And then the 16th verse said, For out of his fullness, the super abundance of his grace and truth, we all receive grace upon grace and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. Favor upon favor and gifts heaped upon gifts. So many times we may be complaining and uh, worried about things, but we don't have to because we have received all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have received his grace and favor and gifts upon gifts, and we just need to remain with him and allow him to lead us. Mm -hmm. You know, he is our good shepherd. He is our father. And then he, his father is God Almighty. It says in the 18th verse, uh, well, I read 17, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and unearned, undeserved favor of God, the truth came through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way we can receive this, is through Jesus Christ. You have to accept him by faith, mm -hmm. that he is our Lord and Savior, that he died on the cross for you and me. And it says, no one has seen God, his essence, his divine nature at any time, the one and only begotten God, that is the unique son who is in the intimate presence of the Father. Because he's sitting at the right hand side of the Father. In heaven, right now. He has explained him and interpreted and revealed the awesome wonder 
of the Father. And then go with me to John the third uh, chapter. I can make the text. I just had to uh, open up to those who maybe, maybe don't know Jesus. May have been in church all their life and, and uh, still hadn't received Christ they thought they had, but they haven't. And it says here, uh, John the third chapter, the 15th verse says, So that whoever believes will in him have eternal life after a physical death and will actually live forever. You know, when you receive eternal life, this body is flesh, it's, going, it's not going to last. Mm -hmm. It's perishing every day. It says, uh, "What well, God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish, but have eternal life. We must trust and believe in him. Now, I know a lot of people say, but if you don't understand, it's, it's just so hard. You don't know what I'm going through right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But we got to take our eyes over the rock. And we have to uh, look toward where our help comes from. Mm -hmm. And all our help comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. It don't come from no man. None of that. It all comes from God. And we have to honor him. We have to worship him. And we must Trust him. If you go to Philippians, the fourth chapter. In the fourth uh, verse, because uh, you know, a lot of times people get so upset and worried. It says, uh, Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, take pleasure in him. Again, I say rejoice. That's Philippians, mm -hmm. fourth chapter. It said, Let your gentle spirit, your gracious and unselfishness, Mercy and tolerance and patience be known to all people. The Lord is near. Now I'm going to tell you one thing. All of those things I just read, your gentle spirit, your graciousness, your unselfishness, your mercy and tolerance and patience, those are gifts of the Spirit. When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit, these, you receive these fruits. These, 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 are, uh, these are fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And as you grow more mature, you, you uh, attain these things with, uh, of patience mm. and mercy and unselfishness. A lot of people already have that unselfish nature, nature in them now and mercy and tolerance. And a lot of times when people see you with those qualities, they think you're a fool. Mm. Look how they got over on them. Hmm. They gonna be patient with me. I, I'm a, I'm, maybe I just slap them upside the head and see how they take that. Hmm. You know they be they, they be mocking you. They be uh, uh pressuring you, mm -hmm. trying to make you fall. Mm -hmm. But you're gonna be strong anyway because that is of God and nobody can make you change. Yes, Hallelujah. Because it's of God. It's of God. Right. Then it says, and so you have these qualities. This is your ammunition. Just realize when you have these qualities, and this is the kind of person that you are, you really belong to God. Mm -hmm. I just read in the 91st Psalm how he's protecting you. Yes. But you got to stay in his shelter. You have to remain with him. Mm -hmm. And many times his children fall down and get beaten and scraped because they're not remaining with him. They try to go to the other side, mm -hmm. trying to please the world. We that's not what we here. We mm -hmm. here to please God. Mm -hmm. It says, "Do not be anxious or worried about anything." It didn't say, "But you can worry about this, but you can worry about that." It didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and that ought to give you some joy. The shower bell. I don't have to worry about anything. That alone worrying to make you have a heart attack, mm -hmm. make you have an ulcer. It can shorten your lifespan. Worrying can make you get cancer, mm -hmm. make you have a stroke. Mm -hmm. See, he don't want us to be sick. And he know all this worrying to make you sick. It'll make you just crazy. It'll make you depressed. Mm -hmm. It'll make you lose your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't be anxious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be anything. Mm -hmm. 
But in everything, mm -hmm. every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. That's all he tells us to do. And he's made that opportunity for us to go to him through his son, Jesus Christ. His son, Jesus Christ, has made that possible. Mm -hmm. It says, in the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, mm -hmm. that peace which stands guard over your heart. He's guarding my heart. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. His peace. Guarding your heart, my heart, and the minds in Christ Jesus is yours. He's given us this too. He already gave us a lot in John, the first chapter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now he's given us peace that we don't even have to worry about mm -hmm. nothing. nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of God is that? Mm. He is a loving God. He is a caring God. He's a God who provides shelter for us. Mm -hmm. He's a God who protects us. Mm -hmm. We don't need an army. We don't need nobody to battle for us when we have a Savior. He is, he is so kind to us. And he, he wants us to be the same way. So a lot of you have those qualities. Keep on doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it says here in the Romans 11 chapter, turn to Romans 11 with me, children. Mm -hmm. We just need to know about our Lord and Savior. It says here in the 31st verse. I got a little excited. I can't, I can't help it when I'm reading about the Lord. And I, I read about how good he is to me. When, despite I know that I haven't been good like that. Mm -hmm. I'm learning and he's training me and mm -hmm. the Spirit is leading me and I'm just holding on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm holding on, children. Mm -hmm. It says in the 36th verse, For from him all things originate. Mm -hmm. This is why we go to him. Why would we go to anybody else? Mm -hmm. When he's made a way, we just come to him. He know everything. It says, from him all things originate, and through him all things live and exist. Mm. He, he is the creator of the heaven and the earth. He's the creator of life. Satan is here to kill, steal, and destroy. It says, and to him all things directed to him be glory and honor forever. Amen. See, that's, that's how good he is to us. Yes. Good. I was wondering, could you read 35? Or yeah, I can. Actually, I read the whole chapter. Yeah, the whole. I did the whole 30, chapter. Or 30. Uh, it says, uh, for who has known the mind of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Or has seen his counselor. Mm -hmm. See, you don't need a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> or who has first given to him that it would be paid back to him? We, we can't pay for anything he's given us. Mm -hmm. Because when he gave us only begotten son to him, that, that's just priceless. Mm -hmm. And then 36 again says, for from him all things originate, and through him all things live and exist, and to him all things directed. Mm -hmm. To him be glory and honor forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. God want us to, to honor him. So in other words, it's all going to come to the plan of God. Yes. So it's you know that his plan plans are good. His plans are by, uh, He's not going to do anything uh, to, to harm us. us. He's not going to do anything to harm us because he, he loves us so much. Mm -hmm. He just loves us. And he knows what's best. Right, he knows he what's, knows best. what's best. best. And then go to turn with me. Um, yeah, we have to, to trust God. 
you know, I'm thinking sometime when your the child may want, oh, I want it now. But right. you tell them, and that's, you're trying to let them know you have to wait because you know that the food is too hot. That's the way you know what I'm saying. It's just too home. hot right now. We did it in our Thursday class. So we, we got to learn to trust. But a child, because a child be trying to pull over here and do what he wants to right. do. You sit somewhere, sit down. No, I want to get up and it's running around and right. read the same word. Right. But and I'm saying that you can the tell them, right, because you can tell them. Oh, I want to cross the street now, but you already right. know that. You see a car coming. They don't see it because they may be too short to see the car. They right. can't see it. But you can see it. And they still are pulling right. on you. Mm -hmm. And if they pull away from you, they can run right in the street and get killed. So we, we, had, to, we had to do And that's what God, God is knowing. You say, I, I, you say I, I, I'm glad you're praying, but right. you know, that's good. That's but right. I still know what's best. Yeah. That's right. But he don't want us not to pray. No, he just want us to, to believe and have faith and trust right. in his, his plan. Well, he know if we're not praying, that yeah. we run into other we're people. We're trying to figure out what to do talk without about our problems. When we go yeah. to him in prayer, we're telling him about everything. Right. Mm -hmm. We're talking to him. Talking to him. And then the Holy Spirit, he allows the Holy Spirit to talk to us all day long. We get ready to do something. The Holy Spirit said, don't do that. Mm -hmm. We're going this way. The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. go that way. Mm -hmm. he's, he's directing us, as he said, when he directs us. Mm -hmm. Through the Holy Spirit all day long. When Christ was baptized and he received the Holy Spirit, he only he was led by the, uh, the Spirit of God completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't do anything on his own. And when he talked to everyone, he said, I only say what the Father tells me to say, and I only do what he tells me to do. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be the same one. Mm -hmm. We're to be the same one. Mm -hmm. And then if you uh, go with me to 2 Corinthians. Because we're under a new covenant, you know, when we receive the, when we receive Christ. Mm -hmm. We're not under the law. We never were under the law. That was for the, um, the Jewish people. The Israelites were under the law. Mm -hmm. We were just some heathens, you know. And we didn't have no way that we was going to be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, and God, through his grace and mercy, uh, allowed us uh, to receive Christ as our Lord and Savior. There's more of that in, uh, in the 15th chapter of uh, John, but it's mainly in the, also in the uh, 11th chapter of um, Romans. And I'll go into that another time when we have a lesson. But we go into, um, I just wanted to read this part. It's in the third chapter of uh, Second Corinthians. Because many times we try to do things and, and God hasn't told us to do some of these things that we're doing. Um, but it's just talking about ministering of the new covenant. And see, once you receive Christ, we all are supposed to be ministering. He wants us to be giving the word to others. Right. And so it says. Be a light. Right. We're starting to commit ourselves again, or this is the first verse. Or, do we need, like, some false uh, teachers, letters of recommendation to you or from others. You know, they had to give his word. It says, you are our letter of recommendation. It's written in our hearts. Recognized and read by everyone. See, when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, and God has written this on our heart. That's why no one is supposed to turn against God or reject him because he's written it on the heart now. They used to have it written on the, uh, the commandments were written, you know, on the, on the tablets that Moses brought down from the uh, mountains. But now it's written on our heart, so we all will know God. Mm -hmm. And so we all have you know, that commandment in us that we're supposed to uh, love God with all our heart and soul. And so when we don't, we be rejecting God. And we can only do that through his power. Right. Not through our own. And it says, because, you know, we have a choice. You can uh, either do what he tells you to do or you don't. But you, uh, uh, it, he's made a way. Mm -hmm. It's written in our hearts, recognized and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ. Mm -hmm. This is the way we're supposed to be walking around. Mm -hmm. We are a letter from Christ. Delivered by us and written not with ink, mm -hmm. but with the spirit of the living God. Not on t 
careless of stone, but on the tablet of human hearts. Mm -hmm. Such is the confidence and steadfast reliance and absolute trust that we have through Christ toward God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not that we are sufficiently qualified in ourselves to claim anything mm -hmm. as coming from us, but our sufficiency and qualifications come from God. Everything we have, mm -hmm. you know, the qualifications and sufficiency come from God. It's not from ourselves. It says He has qualified us, making us sufficient as ministers of a new covenant of salvation with Christ. Not a letter, a written code, but the Spirit. Mm. For the letter of the law kills by revealing sin and demanding obedience, but the Spirit gives life. See, we have received life mm. from God. Mm -hmm. And it says, in the, uh, it says, now if the ministry of death engraved in letters on stones, the covenant of the law which led to death because of sin, came with such glory and splendor that the Israelites were not able to look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory and the brilliance that was fading. See, his, his, when he was up in the mountains and he received all the uh, commandments from the Lord and talked with God, his face was just shining, mm. really bright, like a, a, I guess, bright, bright like the sun. Mm. And it says, how will the ministry of the Spirit, the new covenant, which allows us to be spirit-filled, fail to be even more glorious and splendid? For if the ministry that belongs brings condemnation, the old covenant brings condemnation, the law has glory. How much more does the glory overflow in the ministry that brings righteousness? The new covenant, which declares believers free of guilt and sets them apart for God's special purpose. Mm. That's what we're here for. We for God's special purpose. Mm -hmm. And so uh it says here, I'm going to just jump down a little bit here. And the 16th verse, it says, But when, whenever a person turns in repentance and, and faith to the mm -hmm. Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the, the Lord is the Spirit, and which, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and emancipation from bondage and true freedom. Mm -hmm. This is why we had to, you know, remain with him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you're not with him, you, you're like a slave to this world. Mm -hmm. you, you, you worry and you upset all the time and, and you just uh, not able to be led by the Spirit when you turn away from, from God. It says that we, we all, with unveiled faces, continue to see as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord, who is a spirit. God is a spirit. Mm. And he is love. And then if you would just uh, go with me for a minute to the fifth chapter. Well, I got to do this part too. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. where can you? This is why some people um. Uh, they have a trouble, you know, living in this world, as the pastor read uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, in the fourth chapter, it says, therefore, oh, what, yeah, the same book, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, it says, therefore, since we have this ministry, talking about this, this ministry that you can receive, uh, just as we receive mercy from God, granting us salvation, opportunities and blessings, we do not get discouraged or lose our motivation. Because it can be discouraging sometimes, but we got to keep going through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says, but we have renounced the disgraceful things hidden because of shame, not walking in trickery or adulterating the word of God, but by stating the truth, mm -hmm. openly and plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. But even if our gospel is in some sense hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only to those who are perishing, 
See, it's hidden to those who, who are dying. You know, they're not saved people. Because, you know, unsaved people, they are perishing. Their flesh is perishing and their spirit is dead. Just dead. Walking around dead. And then it says, among them, the God of this world is Satan. See, that's their God. Has blinded the minds of unbelieving to prevent them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves merely as your bond servants for Jesus' sake. Yes. I just wanted to interject too, like when you said it said the unbelievers' mind. God didn't make a person to be an unbeliever. No, they have a choice. You know, they have a, a choice. Because mm -hmm. he's putting it, he put it on their heart. Mm -hmm. You do get to choose. Yeah. Right. It's and and when heart. you choose, then that's allowing God now to take over. Mm -hmm. You know, because he is the only one who gives rest to our soul and to our heart. They don't come from it's ourselves. Written, it's written in the Old Testament that he, uh, he didn't want anyone to have an excuse. It wasn't going to just be uh, the laws written. He was going to write it on our heart. And he was saying so that they would serve him. Mm -hmm. So we have served him. Mm -hmm. So they won't have no excuse. And we'll be able. We'll he be gives able. us the ability through the Holy Spirit to right. and to, to adhere to him. He don't right. make us adhere to him. But it's because we want to. Right. You have so, that love in you that belongs right. to him, and you just want to please him. And you want, just like if you, when you love a person. That's right. Or you love your child. Sometimes your child, especially if they become an adult, you may even have a strong-willed young child. And you want them to know that you love them. Sometimes you got to wrestle with them. Well, you know what I'm saying. The Lord is going to chase us. Right. So right. when we sometimes have to wrestle with the a child that we love. Right. You, do. you know, but you're doing it for their good. You had to keep telling them about And you had to keep had telling to keep them. Like, watering them and doing all of that. And then God right. will bring the growth. Right. But it's our job to do that. It's yeah, not to turn away to, from them. Uh, as it says in the... Um, like some people say, but when you turn 18, you out of here. Right. God like, no. You he know. can say the same thing to us. And he has not. Because this love is, is perfect and unconditional. Once we become his child, we're his child. Right? <laughs> A lot of from where uh, he is, where he is. A lot of people have that uh, attitude, and they uh, they wrong to be that way. If you go to uh, Matthew the twenty eighth chapter, the eighteenth verse. Can he give me Just so uh, people understand, I'm talking about this new covenant being ministry. Uh, we all supposed to be doing this. It says uh, in the 18 verses that Jesus came up and said to them, All authority and power and absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my word, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hmm teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstances, mm. on every occasion, even to the end of age. Mm -hmm. So he's with us, and he don't want us to be afraid to, to do the things he's telling us to do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, go to the fifth chapter, 2 Corinthians 5, and I'm just going to, just, uh, Read a little of that so, so we didn't know that we just had to remain with, with him. We had to trust God because he does love us. Mm -hmm. And he knows exactly what we're going through because Jesus was a man. Mm -hmm. He was born of a baby to a, to a virgin one named Mary. See? And so he woke his earth in the flesh. So he knows what it feels like to be hungry, to be beaten, to be talked about, to be in jail, and even to be killed. Oh, and he knows what it's like to pray. 
He, he, always, God. he always, he always prayed. He always trusted always God because he loved God. He, he prayed. The, the, the son of God and with the children of God. Mm -hmm. It says here in Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, it says, "For well, we know that if the earthly tent, our physical body, he's talking about the physical body, which is our house, is torn down through death, we have a building from God, a house made with hands." Eternal in heavens. For well, indeed, this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our immortal, eternal, celestial dwellers. Of course, you know, sometimes in our body we be aching and hurting, muscles be hurting. Uh, some of us get to walking faster and we get short of breath. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, things be going on with our God. It says, uh, so that by putting it on, we will be, not be found naked. For while we're in the tent, we grow, being burdened, often weighted down and oppressed. Not that we want to be unclothed and separated by death from the body, but to be clothed so that what is mortal, the body, will be swallowed up by life mm. after the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And now he who has made us and prepared us for this very purpose is God, mm. who gave us the Holy Spirit as a pledge, a mm. guarantee, a down payment mm. on the fulfillment of his promise. Mm. So then being always filled with good carriage mm -hmm. and confident hope and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent mm -hmm. with confident belief in God's promises. We got to remain there, children. Mm -hmm. We are, as I was saying, of good carriage and confident hope, prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Therefore, whether we are at home on earth mm -hmm. or away from the home and with him, it is our constant ambition to be pleased in him. Mm -hmm. yeah. For we believers will be called to account mm -hmm. and must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ mm -hmm. so that each one may be repaid for what has been done in the body. Mm -hmm. See, we're going to be called on account of that, whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. That is, each will be held responsible for his actions, purposes, goals, and motives, mm -hmm. use and misuse of his time, opportunities, and abilities. Mm -hmm. Therefore, since we know the fear of the Lord and understand the importance of obedience and worship, we prepare people to be reconciled mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. But we are plainly known to God. He knows everything about us. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we are plainly known also in our consciousness, your God-given discernment. Mm -hmm. And we are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an occasion to be righteously proud of us so that you will have an answer for those who take yeah. pride in outward appearances, mm. the yeah. virtues they, they pretend to have mm. rather than what yeah. is actually in their heart. Mm. Mm. If we are out of our mind, just mm. unstable fanatics, as some mm. critics say, mm. it is for God. Yeah. If we are in the right mind, it is for your benefit. Mm -hmm. For the love of Christ controls and compels us because we have concluded this, mm -hmm. that one died for all. Oh, yeah. Therefore, all died. Oh, yeah. And he died for, for all. all so that all those who live would no longer live for themselves, but mm. for him who died and raised for their sake. Mm -hmm. So from now on, we regard no one from a human point of view, according to worldly standards mm -hmm. and values, though we know Christ from a human point of view, now we no longer know him in this way. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ that is grafted in and joined to him mm -hmm. by faith mm. in him as Savior, Mm. It's a new creature. A new creature. Reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The mm. old things and previous moral and spiritual condition 
God yeah, has his way. way. Yeah, and behold, Lord. new things have come. Mm. Because the spiritual awakening is, brings a new life. Mm -hmm. But all these things are from God, who God. reconciled us to himself through Christ, mm. making us acceptable to him, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation so that by example we might bring others to him mm. and that's our job here today children mm -hmm. get the word out to the people so mm -hmm. they have to know about our lord and savior jesus christ because that is the only way mm. to get mm -hmm. to god is through jesus christ mm -hmm. it says that is that god was in christ reconciling the world to himself mm -hmm. not counting people's sins against them but mm -hmm. counseling mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and he has committed us the meshes of reconciliation, that mm. is restoration to favor with God. Mm. So we are his ambassadors for Christ. Mm -hmm. As though God were making his appeal through us, we, as Christ's representatives, plead with you on behalf of Christ mm -hmm. to be reconciled to God. Mm -hmm. He made Christ who knew no sin to just exclusively be sin on our behalf, mm. so that in him we would become righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to him oh, yeah. and placed in the right relationship mm. with him by his gracious love of God. Mm. I appreciate everyone listening today, and I hope you receive something from the word of God. I know mm. you did, because you don't give and you don't receive. That's you have right. received. And we're going to hear a, a song from mm. Sister mm. Shirley. Mm. Wow. My, my, my. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Son of God. And like I always say, Lord, what do you want me to sing? And that's the view of being my heart. And I have to wait for the Lord. I have to wait for what he wants. That's right. I just want to read real quick. Colossians 3, 16 says, Let the word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your hearts and minds, and dwell in you all its richness as you teach and admonish and train one another with all insight and intelligence, and wisdom and spiritual things, and as you sing, songs and hymns and spiritual songs make a melody to God, with his grace in your heart. And that's why it's important for me to ask God, what do you want? The song, what do you want? What do you want to hear about? And the song today is Jesus, keep me near the cross, because we're coming into um, Lent, coming into the resurrection celebration, uh, what we call, what's called Easter. And so often, we may think we know what the cross is all about, but as we continue to live and grow and read and study God's word, he continues to reveal to us the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain Free to all, a healing stream flows from Cal Calvary's mountain in the
Till my raptured soul, my soul shall find rest beyond, beyond the river. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Miss Cheryl.